The name's Jules. Jules... Gill. Yeah, see my name, plus many, many other reasons, namely my complete lack of combat skills and my much sleazier pickup lines, keep me from ever being one of Britain's most finest 00 agents. But that's not actually a bad thing, as I'm sure the safety of the known world is in much better hands with the actors who have brought Ian Fleming's spy aunt's fiction to life. Yet no matter how many people have shared the 007 name, there has to be a best Bond. A man who's out-tagged and out-shagged the rest of them. So let's rank them today, and have a laugh. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com, and this is James Bond ranking the 007 actors from worst to best. Number 8. Barry Nelson The first man ever to play James Bond in live-action cinema, American actor Barry Nelson took the lead role in an adaptation of Casino Royale that was broadcast on October 1954 on C. BS. Now, to be blunt, it's just okay. 100% okay. The production was subpar, and there are some pretty sloppy sets and some god-awful fight scenes. It's also super weird to hear James referred to as Jimmy, and also that he's got a Yankee Doodle Wanky Woodle accent. Another issue is that this was filmed live, so while Nelson is a good actor, he stumbles over some lines and leaves the character feeling flat. This was not what you'd expect from the Sultan of Suave. Number 7. David Neven Despite the presence of an all-star cast and crew, even including Orson Welles as Le Chiffre, this is best remembered as a curiosity rather than a career-defining moment for the super spy. The character of Bond had still not been nailed down, and due to the comic nature of this film, it produced a character who missed a lot more than he hit with his puns, and trust me, I know that feeling. The film itself, while being infamous for costing 11 million to make, which is astoundingly high at the time, isn't exactly a masterpiece in filmmaking, and has been deemed a confusing and incoherent mess by its harshest critics. Number 6. George Lazenby After five movies as 007, Sean Connery decided to step away from the Bond franchise, which led to the unknown and at the time unproven Australian actor George Lazenby being cast as his replacement. While he certainly looked the part in a tuxedo, Lazenby was very limited as an actor and brought a shadow of the charisma and screen presence to the role that had become synonymous with the character under his predecessor. Originally offered a seven-movie contract, Lazenby quickly decided that he would only play the iconic character once. Partly because of that, Lazenby is definitely the most forgettable Bond, one-dimensional and slightly wooden. Which is a shame, as the plot itself and the direction of this piece is actually one of the most underrated in the franchise. Number 5. Roger Moore The longest tenured Bond, Moore played the iconic spy in seven movies over 12 years, which unfortunately also coincided with a drastic downturn in the quality of the series. After playing Simon Templer in 118 episodes, of The Saint between 1962 and 1969, the Bond producers decided that changes needed to be made to Moore's version of the character in order for comparisons to be made, and this led to the more light-hearted, comedic, and gadget-heavy movies of the 70s and early 80s. While it did work for the first couple of movies, by the time the franchise reached the likes of Moonraker, Octopussy, and A View to a Kill, Bond had almost descended into self-parody. Now, don't get me wrong, Moore is pretty great at delivering a one-liner and a greasy smile, but his nature wasn't backed up with any physicality, with his action scenes being about as tense as doing a weekly food shop. Number 4. Timothy Dalton After the self-referential and increasingly over-the-top Roger Moore era, Timothy Dalton's run as James Bond saw the iconic spy become a more complex and three-dimensional character, toning down the one-liners and gadgets in favour of a more realistic approach to Ian Fleming's source material. Dalton made for a convincingly intense 007, taking the franchise in a more mature direction that was unfortunately cut short after just two movies thanks to protracted legal disputes. Instead of the suave playboy that the character had become come in the previous movies, Dalton instead played a Bond with a harder edge, making the character equal parts reluctant and ruthless. Also, props to Dalton for doing a lot of his own stunts, putting the comically obvious stunt doubles of Moore and Connery to shame. Number 3. Pierce Brosnan After a long time of spy silence, 007 made an impressive return in GoldenEye, with PB and Hay himself Pierce Brosnan at the helm. The film was a critical and commercial success and rejuvenated the series in a fantastic way. Way. The best thing about Brosnan was
was that he managed to balance the ridiculousness of early Bond with the grit and fight that Dalton had instilled in the character. That being said, while the acting was top-notch, the movie's stories, however, seemed to decline over his tenure in the role. However, we're just judging the actors, not the films. I'm sure that we'll get to that at some point. And Brosnan not only looked the part, but managed to apply a sense of charisma and roughness that was sorely needed at this time. Number 2. Daniel Craig If you thought that GoldenEye was a great way to refresh the Bond franchise, then Casino Royale is an amazing way to reboot the Bond. Not only was the story lovingly retold in a way that removed any shred of farce that had been seen prior, but it was also guided by the laser-like eyes of Daniel Craig. It stripped back the gadgets and doubled down on the action and was all the better for it. Even more impressive was that they actually cast this as Bond's first real mission, having just acquired his bullet hole pilot license. As a result, this Bond is cold, brutal, and not perfect. He makes mistakes, big ones. This is a Bond of the modern era and is quite nearly the best iteration of his character. Well, that is apart from one, obviously. And number one, Sean Connery. The original and still the best. It's very unlikely that the Bond series would still be going strong after 50 years if it weren't for Sean Connery. In his hands, Bond became a cultural icon. With a strong screen presence and an abundance of charisma, Connery almost effortlessly established 007 as one of the coolest characters in the movie business. Suave and charming, with the innate ability to deliver a perfectly timed and witty one-liner. Growing into the character as his time in the role progressed, the actor's first three outings as Bond, Dr. No, From Russia With Love, and Goldfinger still rank as three of the very best movies in the franchise. When people think of James Bond, they usually imagine Connery's version of the character. With him in the lead role, the franchise settled into a formula of martinis, gadgets, and gorgeous girls, all anchored by an increasingly assured and confident performance. You are welcome. And that's our ranking. What order would you choose? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And then why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.